Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the board me. Today, we are taking a look at the one to five player cooperative deck building game, Rescuing Robin Hood, designed by Bryce Brown and produced by Castillo Games. Now, in this game, the theme is Robin Hood has been captured, and it is our job as his merry men to gather a group of villagers and storm the castle by the fifth day, by the end of the fifth day, and rescue Robin Hood, and potentially then try and take out the Sheriff of Nottingham. So we have five days to try and rescue him. Let's go down to the table and take a look of how the game sort of works, and then we'll come back up and I'll give you some of my thoughts on this game. So, at the beginning of the game, each player will get a leader of their merry band and a deck of eight random starting villager cards. Each day, you will draw four villagers into your active hand from your deck, and you will always have your leader in your hand. There are four different stats that these villagers have, Wits, Stealth, Brawn, and Jolliness, which will be used in trying to defeat the Sheriff's Guards to rescue our villagers, and ultimately Robin Hood. There are also villagers that will give you different tokens that will give you some kind of special ability each round. After you have drawn your cards for that day, you will set your markers on the Attribute Tracker by adding up all your stats from the villagers and leaders for that round for each attribute. In the middle of the table, we have our battlefield for the day, which will vary from round to round. Days one and two will be the same setup, days three and four will be another setup, and day five, we will have the final setup where we will charge the castle and hopefully rescue Robin Hood. In days one through four, we will be trying to defeat the sheriff's guards to rescue some captured villagers. If we defeat the row of guards associated with the villager, we have rescued that villager, and we will get the right to put that villager into our deck at the end of the day. And these villagers are going to be stronger than our starting villagers. How we defeat the guards is on each player's turn, they can attack twice, using two different attributes. Meaning we could attack with our wit, and then our brawn, or attack with our stealth, and then our wit, or some different combination of the three in whichever order we want to. Jolliness is just used to boost up any of your attribute stats one higher for each Jolliness used. All of these attributes also work differently when attacking with them. With Brawn, we have to defeat an entire row of guards all at once or we fail. And that is done by comparing all of the Brawn of all the guards' stats against however much Brawn the player has. And at the beginning of the round, the only guard stats we get to see are the guards on the far right of each row, but that may change throughout the rounds by using different special abilities. The wit is used in this push your luck mechanic where you will choose to defeat the guards one at a time and choosing to either stop or to try to defeat the next guard as well, which again, you might not know that guard stats either. If you fail, all the guards stay put and you defeat none. Stealth works by you choosing any number of guards in a row, revealed or unrevealed, and compare their total to your total stealth to see if you defeat those guards or if you have failed and all those guards again stay. And if you have any jolliness or brawn left over, that jolliness and brawn get sent to the next player to add to their total, except if you are the last player of the round. At the end of the day, you and your teammates will then cooperatively draft any of these villagers you rescued into your decks. Any villagers not rescued will be put aside and add to the strength of the Sheriff of Nottingham on the fifth day. After drafting villagers, Set up the second day the same as the first day and draw your last four villager cards from those starting villagers you received. At the end of the second day, you will look through all your villager cards and call that deck back down to eight cards and retire the other villagers you have let go. Set up the third and fourth day depending on your scenario card and play out those days the same way. At the end of the fourth day, call your deck now down to the final four best villager cards you want to use to make the final siege of the castle. Set up the fifth day according to your scenario. You will have to defeat two rows of elite guards to get to Robin Hood and rescue him. And before you get to the guards, you must first defeat the castle card, which is really very strong. If you do end up defeating the rows of cards and rescuing Robin Hood, you have won the game technically. But now you can optionally go on and now try and defeat the Sheriff of Nottingham, which he can be very tough. If you beat him, you have really capped off your victory with a nice little bow. Now let's go back to the top of the table and I'll give my final thoughts on this game. Now let's give some overall thoughts, my own thoughts for this game as a whole. I'm gonna break this into some positives, some neutrals, and some negatives. And there's gonna be more positives than negatives because I, I enjoy this game. 
So starting with the positives, uh, there is a ton of variability in this game, which makes it have a lot of replay value. Uh, from the the characters, the merry men that you're going to be playing as the leaders, there's I think there's eight of them, and all of them uh, play differently, have different strengths. So you're going to play to that, and the different scenarios, because the and the scenarios are broken into the first and second day, and the third and fourth day, and the fifth day, and you're going to randomize all of those, and so you're never going to play the same game, or very unlikely to play the same game as before. Uh, the, the the villager characters giving it extra flavor. I enjoyed them. Uh, if you like puns, this game has a ton of puns in their uh, characters. Like Huge Ego, And It Over, Surrender. Uh, so just a bunch of these. Jock and Roll. So there's a bunch of puns in them. And the, and the production team did something completely unnecessary, but I found it charming. And there's this character guide that goes through all of the different villagers and gives them a little bit of backstory. There is a ton of extra flavor stuff in this game. Completely unnecessary and almost irrelevant. But it's really charming. I, I like that they did that. That was that was pretty neat. Um, another positive for me was this game. It's, it's a simple teach. It takes less than five minutes to teach this game to people. But... That doesn't mean it doesn't have depth. This game has a bunch of interesting hard choices for you because you're going to be deciding how are you going to to rescue these villagers. Are you going to use your wits, your stealth, your strength? How are you going to use that jolliness? And maybe you want to leave over your brawn and jolliness to send over to the next players to have them use it. So it's got this puzzle that I really like, but it's simple enough that you can teach almost anyone. Uh, down to kids, but adults are going to enjoy it as well. Let's go on to, uh, oh, there's one more positive. There's actually an accelerated game mode that you can play in this game. And the game, it, it says 20 minutes per person on this, on the box cover. I would say it's probably 30 minutes per person. But if that's a little bit too long for you, there's an accelerated game mode that will turn this more into a filler type game which I enjoy games when they do that, because you're not always going to have enough time to play a big game. So there's an accelerated game mode. Uh, going on to the, some neutrals, there's two of them, and uh, one of them is average components. I mean, it's not good, it's not bad, uh, which is actually almost more of a positive to me, because it's not bad components. So as long as they aren't bad components, I don't care too much. Uh, play this game several times now, and there's no wear and tear on the cards yet. Uh, they're holding up pretty well. So yeah, just, just average components, which is a positive, actually, to me. Uh, another neutral, some people are going to like this, some people aren't going to like this, is that there's actually kind of two game endings. Because the point of the game is you're going to rescue Robin Hood. And you win. But uh, there's if you go on and then defeat the Sheriff of Nottingham, then you win more. Some people aren't going to like that. Some people are... are I myself, I didn't mind it, uh, and this game isn't easy. I should say, uh, I, I rescued Robin Hood the majority of the time I played this, but I lost trying to defeat the, the Sheriff of Nottingham. So the first part I found to be, to be, I'm winning more than I'm losing. But the second part, defeating the Sheriff of Nottingham, I was having trouble with that, uh, but it's a good challenge. I enjoyed that part. Uh, going on to my one negative of this game, and it's not a huge deal, but there is a big setup time. I'm not not huge, but it's about 10 to 15 minutes to set up this game because you're going to have to set up decks and put out uh, villagers and guards and make different things. It's not a huge thing, but there is, and then there's also a lot of in round in between round maintenances. Uh, between rounds, you're going to have to clear off the the villagers, the rescued villagers, and stuff like that, and the guards and sort out new ones. And in between days two and three, you're going to have to call your deck down to your top eight villagers. So you're gonna to have to look at your deck and decide who do you want to keep in there. And then after the fourth day, then you even call it down even to the your top four villagers that you want to finally storm that castle. So it's it, there's quite a bit in, round main, in between round maintenance and uh, it's just big setup time, nothing huge but just know that that's there. Uh, 
So who is this game for? Who would the, I recommend this game for? I would recommend this game for a lot of people, actually, but especially families. Families that maybe you have younger kids. This, this is an appealing theme to a lot of people. And uh, for, for families, it's going to be a good family night game. I, I played it with, with younger children. They liked it. And I, I also played it with some of my game group. I brought it to game night one night, and they liked it as well. So it's very versatile in the audience that it can be for. It can be for your young ones, but it also can be enjoyable for, for gamers as well. It's going to present a lot of interesting choices for them to make. Uh, but that will end my review on this. If this is a game that you think you would enjoy, I would recommend checking it out. And I'm going to uh, have a link down below to a site that you can buy this game off of. Uh, and, but that will conclude this. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care, everyone.